sure we get the right screen. Okay, so we're going to do a live walkthrough of week one assignment. Now, um, the homework this week is to develop a restaurant website and the, the most basic thing is to start with the two pages at uh, the home page and then the menu page and contact us page on the menu page we need to have the food items for the menu the food items should be split into the four sections sometimes you think of as categories All right to get started on the code let's create the project so let's name this project uh, yeah all right and uh, I go to this project there are many ways to do this but the way I like to do it is I create a file for to specify the Ruby version so it's mean I create this Ruby version file with the content 2.2.3 that's to make sure I use the 2.2.3 Ruby. And I want to isolate to create all the Ruby gems in within a gem set so that this project is separate from other projects. So it's called yeah, gem set. Now if I go to this project again, because I'm using RVM, it is using Ruby 2.2.3 with the Nyaha um, gem set. And in Ruby, you can do gem list to display the list of gems that we have installed. Now, to start with Rails, we need to install Rails. So I'm going to um, install Bundler. Because I have a gem set, Bundler is not here, it's a new gem set. So I'm installing Bundler. And I also install the Rails file that I want to create, gem install Rails. In this case, um, I'll just put Rails, it will install the latest version of Rails. And because Rails is the meta gem, to have Rails, you have to have all these other gems. So it's the meta gem. It requires a lot of gem um, that comes with it, so we can create a new Rails project. It takes a little time. Some gem takes longer to install because it one is bigger. Second, some gem it requires compiling. It's called native extension, which means it's using C to build, to compile. But some other gem, it's just Ruby. It's easier, it's faster. While we're waiting for the project to build, uh, for the Rails gem to install, uh, let's take a quick look at the website. Uh, of their homework requirements. We're going to build a menu and contact us the two buttons on the home page. So we will start with a controller and a, an index for that home page. We'll call it welcome controller. And index action. Now, to make the page look good, many of us actually use a um, CSS and JavaScript framework called Bootstrap. And we're almost done here, but let me get to the Bootstrap Rails Bootstrap. For to get the instruction to install the latest gem that support Bootstrap. With Bootstrap, our buttons and our text will look nicer. Okay, we'll re revisit Bootstrap, but now I know that I have the Rails gem. 
Uh, usually you do Rails new and project name, but I already am in the Nyahang, so I can just do project name as that. It will use the current folder as the project name, and it's using my Ruby version and Ruby gem set, and I'm going to use Postgres SQL, right? What is it? Is it just Postgres? Rails new Postgres. Let's let's uh, make sure we use the right syntax. So database equals Postgres SQL. That's what we need. I make sure that I get the right version. Okay, database Postgres. So what I have on the left hand side is a faster way to do it. Now notice that it's using bundle install. I already installed Bundler. Now Rails can use it. That's good. And Rails is doing bundling, um, calling bundle install. It is installing all the files that are um, all the gems that are listed in the gem file. Okay, we'll give it a second for it to finish. With Bootstrap, let's take a look at Bootstrap because we will add it very soon. Bootstrap 4 is not yet out, so we will have to specify the alpha version. If we don't, it will just use the, install the latest stable version. Okay, so I think I have Rails, uh, Node, and I'm just going to launch Tmux to be able to split screen to show. Now, look at our project. This is the Rails project, a new project. We just install all of these gems. Notice we use Postgres for database, and I'm running Postgres over here. You have, uh, it's the easiest way. You install this from postgres.app. Okay? Uh, postgres.app.com. Now, the first thing I'm doing is just to run Rails server. Okay? So, Rails loaded. So, we need to create the database. Let's create the database. Break db create. And then I try again. Great. So this is a dynamic page and it gives you us the Rails environment. Just click on it to make sure everything works. Understand a little bit. And now next is we want to have our own page. So let's go to routes file. Here you can change root welcome index. When I do this, Rails will try to go to the welcome controller and index action. So it's a not found so let's do that okay now before I do it I need I want to create a, a git project so I'm just quickly I am quickly adding everything and I say first commit next I am going to generate rails generate controller welcome controller index action Notice we have a new file here, welcome controller. We have a new index view. Okay, some other ones you can take a look, but those are the two important files right now. And if I refresh, it is in here. So I add window uh, welcome index. Now I go to the index files. Where is it? It is in, let me load the project file. It's in the app folder, view and welcome index now in here basically let's change this to welcome to yeah right and here we will do something more uh, we will provide two links so i'll provide one link called um, menu i don't know where to go yet so let me just do this go to menu and have another one contact us 
let's say it go to contact us. Great. Now let's make it look a little bit better by adding bootstrap to it. Okay. So just real quick, I am adding all these files and go add welcome index. Next is to add bootstrap. I'm copying this file. Go to gem file. Add it. And I run bundle. Now we only need to use CSS. We don't need JavaScript. We can add both. The most important one is here. So I'm going to just add that. Let's go to application.scss. Now this is important to pay attention. When Rails create the project for us, it's in assets, style sheets, but the file is named CSS. So let's rename the file. View, no, app, assets, style sheet, application, Dot CSS. Now, I just use a quick hand here. Basically, I just name, rename it to SCSS. And it, you notice that it's become SCSS. When it's SCSS, the syntax is different. So I cannot use required um, this way. I will use the. This try to load everything. I don't need that. I want to know what I'm loading. So I import bootstrap. So I'm good. And for this to work, if I reload this page, if I reload this page, it will complain because it doesn't know what bootstrap is. Because when I load the Rails server, it has to load the libraries in the jam file. If I don't restart, it doesn't know bootstrap is there. So let's load this. Notice now the font and everything is different. So it looks prettier, and let's for the complete um, for the sake of completeness, let's make sure we add it to the JavaScript file as well. So it's in the JavaScript.js file, okay? Asset JavaScript, and I just need to install add the line require bootstrap socket. You can also use bootstrap. And Spocket is just, um, it requires many small files. Bootstrap requires the whole big file. They have the same effect. Now make sure this is working. Great. Now, if we know Bootstrap, uh, we know that normally we put this in a container div. So I put this here. And if I refresh, now put it uh, in a container so it's you have the padding on the left and the right that's not good enough let's make sure we have this um, thing this square thing and in the bootstrap website bootstrap if I just search for bootstrap I want to know what what component uh, I need to go bootstrap for bootstrap for and this one Right. The documentation is not as good as with Bootstrap 3 because it's new. But we are going to read the documentation uh, really quickly. How do I find it? Uh, documentation and components. Great. Where are the components? So what do we need first? We want a this is called a hero, right? Let's uh, take a look at this side. Is it somewhere here? Want to find something like this. I don't remember what it is, so I'll just right click on this, inspect. This is called a header, and this is called a jumbotron. Is that right? So, component. Let's go back to the Jumbotron. Okay, great. So let's copy this code. Put in our wel welcome page. Put it right here. Paste it in. Great. And notice I just put welcome here. So 
that's good and then this is just the let's put these two links in this okay now let's take a look at our page oh it's a little better okay what else do we need to do make them into button and unfortunately we and the two buttons next to each other so if I find button I want button group it looks like this right so copy this and if I paste this in I realize that uh, I just need to put these two guys in here right and I have to look have the class name button button secondary right same thing great right now next is we're going to take them to a different page but let's commit what we have done so far we've made changes we have a new file so I add these changes I say home page next is to create the contact us page right now if you click on it you go to contact us to have this path you go to the browse file and add notice when I Rails generate uh, controller win uh, welcome action it does that but I don't need next is I want to have uh, it's basically I want to go to contact us okay and maybe I'll just go to welcome action and contact us path okay so that means if I go here it will say I need to find the contact us action so let's go to welcome controller and provide a provide a contact us method and of course when you run this method it will try to find the view file so we create the view file this view file will be created in welcome folder contact us so here I have contact us and let's try to find the map of where we are so we are at la let's go to maps where's this restaurant la ten, ten. Uh, yes so even though I type it wrong I still have this address and let's get the embed map address and I put it right here now if we go to contact us now we we'll have the map now let's put the address of the map here maybe put it in the block now with bootstrap you can do this row and I'm going to create a row uh, and I use a grid so on the left hand side I give it 4 and on the right hand side I give it 8 so I put the iframe on the 8 and then here I put the address so you can put it in a block and this will be the address right um, basically there are many ways but this is just a quick way So it looks very ugly, so maybe I don't like the pre block uh, because um, just basically you can use the HTML5 style. Uh, now, Bootstrap does let you have address, but so just to be really quick, I think it looks okay. Now, it looks a little bit uh, funny, we should have a container around it so that we are centered so if you resize the browser it works nicely you see that if you go smaller on the phone screen it automatically go to the next page because we only do great if it's small now I want it to be I see the concept of rails is that it has to be dry so I'm having container if I use container everywhere I don't want to I remove it and I remove it in my index I remove it because I'm using the same thing and 
where do I go? I go to view layout application layout. This is where the code is for each action. And I'm putting container in here. So now I get the same. If I go back here, I get the same uh, layout. Now that's good. I just save a little bit of code. Uh, on this home welcome page, now I want it can be more Ruby ish. I can do contact us back and it still works because when I do the route file, this give us contact us back. To know what routes Rails have, you go to Rails slash in routes. Well, Rails slash info. But it, it will be the same. See, know how, how notice how I go to Rails, it gives me the routes, but Rails slash info, right? So you see I have contact us path and root path. So that's good. On contact us path, um, uh, on the home welcome index, I have lead to contact us path. Um, then maybe on contact us, contact us, I make this link to um, maybe I change this uh, maybe I change this to H2 and I have the H1 as yeah, right link to and this go back to root path means if I go back to our page contact us people can go back to yeah. that's good now next is menu page but before that I'm just going to finish a commit um, contact us page. Now for menu page, we're just going to generate another controller called menu controller. Okay. Uh, this and we have the index action. Now to do that, we go to the route file, and I don't need this menu index, but I might actually take it to menu because I want more custom go to menu controller index action notice the original line this means this but because it's convention if you just say this it's good enough right but that that's it we actually prefer it to be shorter uh, welcome no menu slash not chat bound index great and on the welcome index page, now I can use menu. Great. When I go to menu, now this is where I need to display my menu. So we need food. That's when we talk about model. So food should have the following field. So let's do that. We create food mo model. Now I'm going to use uh, uh, something more convenient. Rails generate scaffold. So scaffold, I'm generating. I call my food uh, food item. That's the name of the model. And we have each food item is name. Of course, name is a string type, but that's the default, so you don't have to type anything. Description, maybe that is text type because that's longer than string. Uh, price, uh, it is actually a decimal uh, um, type. Uh, and section it's a text and image URL is another text now if I do scaffold what it does for me is that it create an, a migration to add this table food items to the database it update the routes to include food items resources route so we will learn about restful routes it create a, a a uh, controller for me and all the views and that's mostly it some other files we don't have to know for now now the magic of this is that we have to migrate right db before i migrate i'm going to show you what we are doing with migration in the db migrate there's a new file in this file it create a new table with the properties we just agreed on. 
and when we create db migrate we will have a new file look on the left it's called schema file this describes our database right now we just added food items and on uh, the website now loads and notice I have a few more routes so this is called scaffold scaffold give us give it to us for free now food items that's the routes we have because if you notice the route files we have resources food items it give us basically this give us slash food items display basically this display all food items right food items one two three display food item with id one two three and more you will learn about soon so create a new food item now let's take a look we have food items here and we can click new we go to new and we can create one let's create one right now for bar and the best noodle soup in the world and price is one two um, and section maybe this is a breakfast and image url so we're using a tip from here you can use um lorem flicker if, if i do this for plus bar I will get a fur bar image. So that's what I want, and I'm going to create one right now. Where is it? Here. Okay, let's create this item. Now you see this is successfully created, and that's a show page. This is the ID of the first item. Let's go back. Now this is our list. Now this is a little ugly. So where do we go to customize this? Under view app view and food item what view file index so i'm going to use bootstrap here if i just call this table immediately this look a little nicer and new food item down here maybe i call it let's say secondary. looks a little nicer Okay. Of course, maybe you can do more. Uh, table. Great. So Stripe means each row is going to be different. So let's let that one. And how do we show this on a menu page? Now this is um, I I could make this food items a menu page, but I want this scaffold view to be here. It's useful. Let's go to menu. Let's show the images, okay? And to do that, before I do that, I'm going to commit what I have so far, All right? Generate food item, scaffold view for food items, okay? Um, generate food item scaffold. Now, to display it here, we go to the controller. What controller is it? Menu controller. Index. So the, I'm going to get all the food items so far. All. Now I prepare the variable food item so I can v do it in the view. Food item menu index. So here I can display food item dot each do food item and this is the really ERB block and let's just display what do I do um, yeah and let's just display the name so let's just display food item dot name and wrap this in a URL So that's good. We have the first item in the menu. Let's create a bit more. So I go back to food item. 
this time I do for a guy and if you are sick of fur ball try for a guy and this is going to be 50,000 Vietnam dollars uh, again let's just put it in breakfast now image URL I don't like this I have to do it every time so I'm going to automate this let's see I don't create anything now go back to this boring table we have two items what about our menu page okay now I want to display each of this as a card in uh, using bootstrap so let's look at card this is the code for how do I go to card for card so a card looks like this you can have the um, what I want is this image and then this block so let's copy that basically this card notice that each of this is a card block and I only need the first two so so maybe I'll just copy everything and to replace this I'm going to do a card okay so I paste this card in here I remove the surrounding now in each card here's the image okay so image card let's um, put the image in here so in here I can do ERB again food item dot image URL and a block here will be this is the title of the card what should the title of the card be it should be the name of the food right food item dot name and this is food item dot description okay so I can have a display of a few things here but I don't need it so I'm going to remove it and here maybe I can do order and I like making it a button maybe make it red so people can try to order it okay great so I have the um, image there but it's not showing so let's try to see why technically we could just have here's a quicker way to do it it's an image element so we we actually when it's an image element we actually type put the source in so this is a source so same thing uh, I think what Bootstrap is trying to do is Bootstrap will use JavaScript, but we don't need it right now. We just use source. Okay, so here Rails has an easier way um, image tag, and I call this, um, I pass the image URL, and I give it an ultimate, uh, uh, ultimate name, which is be, to be um, image for a food image. Now let's see what happens. So that's what I have for image and here food items the, if the image doesn't exist. So I, I'll call it maybe I'll change this to uh, the same name food item dot image name, uh, dot name. So we know that oh we cannot find the image for food. Yeah. So let's make it more interesting. I want an image here too. So that's when take, check this out. I say image URL or default. So I want to create a method called image URL or default. And of course, if I do it now, it will crash because it wants to find it in the food item model. So let's go to the model. Now, really quick, we haven't been to the model, but here's our food item model. And now I create a image URL or default. What does it mean? If I have image, if image URL 
is not empty, right? So here in Ruby, you can check present. It means it's nil or it's empty. If it's not nil and it's not empty. So of course, if it's image URL, I return that. Else, I return something else. Now here's the trick. We will copy this and maybe I return the same thing here just to show an idea. So if I do this, I will get furball image. Of course, each time is different, uh, but this is always kind of image. But that's not what we want. What we want is name. Now, again, it's a little slow because of internet request. And let's 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 check what image the sun is displaying. For God, okay. So each time you load, it's different. Now there is a problem. If you go here, you see that there's a space. That's not good. We need to escape the character. So in Ruby, you just do uh, Ruby CGI escape. I think there's a uh, escape function. Maybe that's just enough. So I escape it. For plus that. That's what I want. Okay. Now the image is still funny. Great. I think I'm pretty successful with each item. I can add more. But now let's make it display in the right places. So to have the cart display, I like to have three of this. So here it's a little tricky, but here's when Ruby can help you. Let's go to this file. So I'm going to do this. Um, I have groups of three items. So in Ruby, you can do in groups of three. So this is a group, and in each group, I have group dot each, and then food item. Okay. Now in each group, I create a new row. Okay. Now I put an N over here. And in each group, actually put the whole thing in that group. We can have each row. So in each row, we can have three cards. And then it means the card has to be, let me just put one of these in, because we have four card, four, four, four is 12. So bootstrap is in grid of 12. So when the screen is small or larger, we have, Groups of 12. Now, I might have something wrong here. Uh, what happens? Food item. What is this here? So, in, let's debug this. Food item is nil here. If I, in groups of three, because then what happens is I have only two food items, right? And then if the third one is nil. So I'm, I'm just going to do, um, here I'm going to call, uh, so here, just to show you in Ruby, if I have an array of 1, 2, and nil, let's get rid of the nil. So if I do compact, I will drop the nil, guys. So I can do that. Compact. Okay, so now I have two cards, and each one is like that. So let's check in. I have my main menu, uh, but I like to have a header so I can go back and forth. So let's look at the header. Header, right? So header, um, you can do a header in a card. That's not what I want. So I'll go header. Let's try and find. Maybe not far. Okay. That bar looks like this. And let's create a nav bar. I don't need many of these things. I just need, um, but I'll copy here and I'll change it. Now, where should the nav bar go? 
for our purpose it's okay we can put it in the layout right because all pages have navbar so let's try to put the navbar here and we don't need many of this so I'll delete what I don't need uh, so for example let's just uh, put everything in here now the first thing here is to go back to the root path right and now this is uh, Let's put this, yeah. Okay, and each of this, I feel like I can have the first one, uh, which is just nav item. So I can do this with booty. Notice we have the active one, but we must worry about it later. Link to menu. What is it called? Um, menu path. And class. there's no need for. So notice we have here, we will have nav item. new path and then just basically here nav link and same thing for the other one so I'll delete all of this contact us will be very similar right con oops. Uh, changes to contact us contact us Great. I hope this works. And we have a menu. Let's wrap this in another container. So you can just wrap it in a container if just in case. Okay. That looks good. If I go to menu, go here, contact us, go here. Now I don't need the uh, contact us. I don't need this link anymore. Looks good, menu. And this has to go to home page. So I think I'm good there. Let's just check in. Get at these files and we call this uh, menu page. Basic menu page. Now let's look at the requirements. We need to navigate with four section. So we need that. So let's do the four section. I need to explain it right here. I go back to my bootstrap uh, and I need to find a button group again. Right? Are they button group? Yeah, this will be full good. So, section. Let's go to the menu in bootstrap. Uh, in here, let's actually, let's just paste this in. We have three sections. So, I'm going to have. Um, something called sections dot each section now you can do it as button in this case it, we just do link okay it's link section name right and it goes somewhere now I'm going to send back to the, the same page I don't send back to the menu path but with a program section And we want it to look good, so we'll do this again. Let's go. What happened? I don't have the sections, but so let's prepare it. Sections in the menu controller. Now in Ruby, you can do this breakfast, lunch, right? An easier way to do it is just to use the syntax breakfast, lunch, dinner, supper, or something like that. So, if we do that, we have the breakfast. Now, notice if I click on breakfast, I get section breakfast. Lunch, section lunch. Dinner, section dinner. So, what is it? Uh, that is under params section. Let's look at the, let's look at the uh, page here, the rails law. When you run, it go to and a section and it parameters section. So what I want here is to load the section first and here I to load my section. I put this params section. It means I only load food item in this section. Okay? 
So, if I do this now, what happened? It will crash. It will say it doesn't have no what tracks by protection is. But notice we have params uh, which should work here, but I don't know why it doesn't work. If I, uh, if I do section, oh, that's weird. Uh, ignore that. It should work, um, but in this case, uh, sections here. So something is. This um, is not smart enough, uh, so if you want to use a smarter system, you can use better errors. But don't worry about it. Um, if it doesn't work, I don't care in this case. So let's create this method. Now notice this is a class method that returns many food items. So I need to go to the food item model. And because it's a class method, I call it by section. Section name, which is this section. Now here's the cool part. Here is in the model you can call where and section is section. Now this will create a query for you. Select star from sections table uh, food item table where food items dot section equals right this section. So that's the idea. Okay? Now if we do this and if I create, now it works. If I click on breakfast, I have two, lunch, nothing, dinner, nothing. Let's create one for lunch. Uh, food item, one food item, which is, I call it, uh, type Vietnamese. And I'll just type Vietnamese for, uh, maybe this is 10,000. I ignore the but section will be lunch. Okay. Great. Go back to menu. Breakfast. Lunch. Lunch. Right. Notice how oh it takes a bit of time. That's okay. Breakfast. Lunch. Okay. So we want to display everything on the main menu. Maybe Let's create, uh, that's okay, that's not as important. Uh, we succeed in this task, uh, at least five food items. So this is a lot of work, we have to add more items. But we already have the navigation to the section and we're going to check in, right? So let's, uh, Let's look at what we have so far. We modified the controller, menu controller, and we added the section, added the variables. Okay, good. So I say, I add these changes and say add section. Great. So what else should we do next? We create an order. Okay. To create an order, I will um, create, click order, and it has to take me somewhere to create an order for me. So if I look at this order, create order page, fill in name, phone number, and address. Let's create an order model. Now this time, I don't need to create a scaffold because a scaffold gives me a lot of things. The rail generate, I'm just gonna call it create a model. Now I can do a little bit more, I call it resource. And what it does is Rails generate resource, it will give you, you will see, it will give me something similar to model, right? But uh, a little bit more. So real, we call it order. Now let's say in this case, each person can order a food item only so we have food item and order belongs to a food item so order belongs to so you can say food item id is integer in rails you can do a bit more if you do this references it means it understand that an order belongs to a food item and what else do we need uh name phone number and address name phone number and address so address is text phone number 
Mm. Maybe it's a string. So we do that. Now notice when you do the source, it create the model, the generate model, and it also create a controller, but it's empty. So we can create it. Uh, we can use the controller. Now, if I look at Rails, I have to migrate. Before I migrate, let me go to the schema file that uh, the latest migration. So you see that because I call references, it create it will understand to create food item underscore ID index true means you will see why it will make that column an index uh, create an index for that column. Foreign key true means my uh, PostgreSQL will be very strict. You cannot delete a food an order um, if if you cannot delete an, an, a, a food item if there are orders for that food item. So let's migrate this. And I'm going to go to the schema file, which now you know where it is. Uh, and you see that this orders created, and then foreign key and index. Okay, the foreign key is called constraint. Great, so let's, let's check. I have the food items and order, but this is not what I want because if I go here, I don't know what food item it is. If I go to order slash new. What I want is if I click on for a bar order, I want to go to order uh, food item. This for a bar, right? That's the show page. I want to go to order slash new. Okay, so how do I get this? It's called nested routes. So let's go to the route. go to the route file you notice how it create orders here it means it give me slash orders and everything but this is not what I want I want to put it under this it's called nested routes so now I will go to food items slash maybe one two three and that's an ID uh, it's a food item ID and then orders slash new that's how create a new order so if I go here you see that now it understands to go to orders controller. I just need to do action new. Let's do that. Orders controller. Okay. Notice it's empty, so I use a resource because I want control. So I know a food item now. How do I do it? I find by food item ID. Okay. And let's look at the view file. Uh, for the first. Time. I'm going to show you. We go to the view. Where do we go? Orders. We need to create a new view. Okay. So I create a new view file here. And order four. Let's create one. So basically, I'll just say order four. And here's the name of food item. Not name. order for a bar okay because it knows so let's create a new form this is when we need a form and in rails this is how we create a form form 4 is a new order right, let's say we form for a new order and in this but we don't have this so let's I'm just gonna say form 4 order dot new do okay and now to create a form here, I just do form text field name. And up here, I'll say maybe form label. Field. Just label, right? Name. Let's see what we have. Now, we are submitting to orders path. Form is smart enough. You try to submit to the um, Try to post to orders path, but what we want is not orders path. We want food item orders path. This is the guy. So in Rails, you can do it easily by putting food item in front and put it in a parenthesis. 
now this line is the same as same as um, um, how, how do I do it uh, same as food item orders path and the path that's the same but some people prefer to write it this way uh, some people prefer to write it this way so actually this will be food item form for food item but same to this URL so this is the longer form um, but let's do it a short way and I go back to that route refresh great I can submit a name and we want more now uh, let's look at form I want the form to look a little prettier so it's called form group it will look like label and input right so it just group that in form group so if I say fill set which is the same as div here uh, form group and say here label is um, this is a label but input class is form control so class form control okay name and that if we want to make it a little smaller you can always put a diff on it uh, you can say with 400 pixel make it smaller now sometimes we want it more dynamic so some people prefer it to be just that okay so let's say order that and when you do column it's just gonna add this around so that it doesn't go in just a little bit here smart enough okay so next let's do the same thing for for name and for phone number and phone and address right now for address this is called text area great let's add a button to it app.submit place submit order great now let's make this button a little prettier so here's where we learn something uh, new we can add a validation so I go to order belongs to I say validate uh, food item if I create an order it has to be present okay I also want the name of my order to be present so if I submit an order it will should not create but I have to handle this submit order so let's do it submit oh create action so let's go to create that create now here's where we create the action uh, we haven't we didn't have to do it for food food items because it generated for us and it's much more complicated if you take a look it handles a little bit of different formatting we just need to create new and save that's all we care about uh, in Rails we have to use something like this it's food item params but there's a method that you don't trust parameters so if people submit a lot of parameters you won't want to accept these guys so here let's go here and what I want is very similar if you look at the this basically order is what order dot new uh, order params and order params the method okay and in here we use something similar to over here basically for our params it will be when you create when you submit 
look at the URL it submit everything under um, under here or well, we, we don't accept it yet so let's let's have a create action right here and I'm going to crash say raise ha black and I'm, I'm going to refresh that submission notice it crashes here but this is what our parameters is inside order we have name phone and address so again you can see it here order name phone and address so let's go here and that's why we do params require order so in here we have name phone and address but we have to permit name phone and address so if if someone submits something else like admin or something like that we don't allow them because notice we don't allow them to submit food item id order has because we already know it we don't don't want user to submit it okay so create this now if order dot save and now what happens when order save we display a message called order created right order submitted thank you now if we use doesn't save we go back to this page but I can just go back to this page I can redirect to this new order page right but here I can just render the new action without running this okay so let's see to render this I have to prepare the same variables so I have to do that okay when you create you submit to this year I need a food item now we have to find it so let's put it here now when you create an order I need to know what order it is right so I do order dot food item, food item. okay if I don't have this it doesn't know what food item it is okay so let's say flash here error error right and here's one way to show the error uh, order dot error dot full messages dot two sentences so these are flash messages it means it's stored for the next page request but we have to display it I will show you how to display it so here if we submit again notice it will create fine it will create a new order it will save let's see but it will not save because we don't have name let's see now so we have errors full message name cannot be blank that's error we cannot save, so we have two sentences. Now, two sentences. Let's try again. Go back to this page. Now I want to display that. So on um, order new here, I will check if uh, flash error. Right? I will display. Uh, now here is bootstrap again. Alert. That's the. Let's try. Submit again. It's gonna be blank. Good. So, but this should probably go to the layout, right? Let's go to move it to layout before yield here. And I can do the same thing with. You can make it shorter, but for today. This means success, and we're gonna do success, and will be here will be um, success. Great, let's place an order. Name cannot be blank. It still work, but it's move up here. 
right? Now let's create an order. Uh, food. Uh, first order. Uh, name. Uh, let's name uh, Ricky. Phone number. Blah blah. Submit. Now this is what happens, right? We some. What happens here? It say, oh, something happened. After it say missing template. It's trying to find create dot HTML. But what we want after creating here is that we want to redirect to let's say menu bar. Okay, the user already placed an order. No, right? So menu, yeah, we go direct to menu. Okay, let's try again. Order submitted. Thank you. So now we already have two orders. Create the first time, create the second time. How do we don't even know that? We go to Rails console, you can short for Rails C, and you can do order.count, order.all, and you can see my first order for Ricky, second order also for me. Let's create maybe the number of order so far. Uh, basically, just to show how many orders someone have made. Okay, so maybe let's put a number right here. Uh, maybe over here. So in Bootstrap, maybe we can use a batch. It doesn't have a batch uh, label. So it looks like a label. Uh, let's say we have how many orders uh, so we can, can put it somewhere. So um, just to show. So how do we do that? Menu page, index, and then cart here. Let's put a label. Span label, let's say it's a default one. Now here you can show how many order. So food item dot orders dot count maybe okay so you understand the dot count dot size and dot length the differences but for today we just display the number of order now for it to work now it doesn't work it will crash and say I don't know food item dot orders well we haven't tell food item that here you say we haven't told it that it can have many orders now I can also add dependent destroy. It means if I remove this food order, food item, all the orders are gone. So now if I go to this page, I should see. I don't see it. What happened? How many orders I get? Oh, it's under image. So maybe under. Let's put it under here. Okay, in in this tab. Where's my, where is it? Item name. Uh oh, oh. Mm -hmm. It's nothing. Uh, order, so food item, dot first. And so let's say, this is a, is food item. A dot order. That's two size. Oh, okay. Because this is there's a typo here, so it doesn't display because of CSS. Great. So if the more order you place, it will display. So that um, with that we finish most of the required task, and you can you see that we've done. Thank you for your order. We fill in the name and everything. You can work on the bonus stories. So let's uh, conclude the lesson today by committing this. Um, allow users to create order. All right, thank you.